Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this Delhi UPSC MCQ series. In the evening, these lessons are coming. In the morning, the Hindu and Nas videos, they come. Both the lessons you need to follow. 45 minutes uh, you, uh, you will uh, uh, need only for both the lessons. And extremely important these issues are. Current affair based issues from PIB, from uh, the newspapers, magazines and uh, uh, other important books and all. So let's start the lesson. Here, 70% uh, off is going on on all these uh, courses till 30th of October. This off will be there so uh, buy you can buy these uh, courses there according to your examination and paid platform is available at 159 rupees per month only very important videos are coming and your current section will be totally covered here pocket news app is trending on google pay you can download that regarding these courses the description is given below the video and uh, you can call on these numbers here any query any issue regarding the payment and all you can call on these two numbers and you will get your solution there and PDF you will get here, here on this telegram channel which is given here on this Facebook group so you can send me a request here you can follow me on Instagram too and first question standing committee of parliament there are committees are these non permanent you see parliamentary committees are of various types according to the needs according to the uh, uh, a specific purpose they are formed and some are permanent some are non permanent parliamentary standing committees as the name suggests standing these are the permanent ones and some are ad hoc committees and they are there for the specific purposes and uh, they are not created every year standing committees they are uh, formed for one year especially these members will stay for one year and there will be elections for these members okay not all of them are appointed so second is wrong first is also wrong dn is the right answer here now we will see these uh, committees uh, in much detail parliamentary committee parliament has to perform very complex tasks and uh, uh, they are no experts these mps and all they just vote on those issues on uh, limited understanding so expert advices are needed and they need to involve some luminaries there many of the times so committees are there for that so these issues uh, uh, under these legislations and the bills they are referred to these uh, committees experts are there any other help which is needed that is taken and uh, they scrutinize these bills and then they give advices and these advices can be taken and they can be a part of this uh, bill in the future and uh, ultimately the final bill will be there so scrutiny evaluation analysis is something that happens in uh, committees and they are there uh, for uh, those tasks now controversially this year many bills were passed and they became act but many of them they were not referred to these committees even the controversy was there regarding the uapa bill the rti uh, amendment bill many allegations were there that they, those were not properly scrutinized and uh, many other issues like rafael issue the opposition was demanding that send it to joint committee but that was not sent there and uh, that that was some issue so parliamentary committees are extremely important and they are called parliamentary committees if it is appointed or elected by the house or nominated by the speaker of the Lok Sabha or the chairman of the Rajya Sabha there it has a secretariat provided by LS or RS next standing committee and ad hoc committees standing committees are permanent one they are constituted for a fixed tenor ad hoc committees are appointed for a specific purpose and there can be advisory ad hoc committees and inquiry committees advisory are of uh, uh, some types like select committees and joint committees so they are for specific purpose and they are appointed to consider and report on a particular bill so these are advisory committees inquiry committee to inquire into a specific issue like the 2g scam uh, there a committee was formed for Beaufort's issue the committee was formed inquiry committee so these are ad hoc committees and parliamentary standing committees are there constituted every year so here you can see the first important committee on public accounts where they scrutinize that uh, that the money which was allocated to these uh, departments and all was it uh, spent properly and uh, the CAG is a friend and philosopher of uh, this committee and 15 members are there they are elected by Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha both so total 22 members are there term is for one year and elected through the principle of proportional representation so indirect election election happens main function is given here the spending by the government and they analyze that spending so this is uh, a work that uh, is done after the spending so that's why 
it's important but uh, that's not something which is uh, uh, controlling the functions of the government because these analysis are done after the spending so that's why it's a issue next estimate committee the highest number of members are there in estimate committee these are 30 members one more committee which is empowerment of women committee that also has a th uh, also has a 30 members and uh, that's a joint committee means uh, the members are coming from both the houses estimate committee is there by the lok sabha only and all the 30 members are coming from lok sabha committee is there for one year main function uh, is uh, given here so that's estimate committee and third most important committee is the committee on public undertakings these three are the most important ones and their details are given here again there are 22 members 15 coming from lok sabha 7 coming from rajya sabha so it's not a uh, uh, separate committee for both the houses it's a joint committee business Ad advisory co committee and there are uh, uh, 15 members in the lok sabha committee and in the rajya sabha committee there are 11 members so separate committees for both the houses there and you can see here uh, the speaker of Lok Sabha is the ex officio chairman in the Lok Sabha committee and respectively in the Rajya Sabha committee chairman is the ex officio chairman or uh, who is the person uh, which is uh, vice president of India because vice president heads the Rajya Sabha there as a chairman. Mm -hmm. Next other committees like pr private members bills and resolutions and committee on government assurances subordinate legislation welfare of SCST. This committee is very important subordinate legislation. What is subordinate legislation? You see, as I told you, these uh, uh, MPs and all, they vote on these issues and the uh, bills, they become act when the assent is given by President of India. So these are simple uh, legislation in a skeleton form. Then they are given to the executive, the government there, and they take help from these IS officers and other important officials and all, all these people are involved there. And they complete the details of it and uh, all the issues all the needs all the analysis is done there and they complete those legislations there so this is something which is delegated to these executive and the officials so this is called subordinate legislation and parliament delegates these legislations to the government and the officials there so this is subordinate legislation issue so they check that how they worked on these things and uh, there is a committee for that Okay, so rules, sub rules, and all these things will be scrutinized here. Welfare of SCST, there is a separate committee for that. 30 members are there, 20 from Lok Sabha, 10 members from Rajya Sabha. So there are also 30 members here. Committee on absence of members, it exists only in Lok Sabha. These are uh, something very important. 15 members will be coming from Lok Sabha only, and it is there only in Lok Sabha. So these kind of unique committees are important. UPSC has asked a question regarding that rules committee they are there in both the houses and uh, in Lok Sabha 15 members are there speaker is the ex officio chairman of this committee in Rajya Sabha 16 members are there and uh, vice president or the chairman is its ex officio chairman next to so general purpose committee the committee in each house and the functions are given here next committee on privileges privileges are given to these MPs and all and uh, to examine the cases involving the breach of privilege is scrutinized by this committee next committee on petitions that is also there petitions are there in both the houses and uh, Lok Sabha committee has 15 members Rajya Sabha committee has 10 members so some committees are joint committees in in, in that uh, uh, members are taken from both the houses some are like present in both the houses separate committees okay so you have to uh, notice these things here Next, Joint Committee on Office of Profit under Article 102 of the Constitution, they uh, scrutinize these issues that any MP, any important uh, uh, elected representative, he is not, not enjoying any office of profit there. He is not taking salary from any other source and he is not involved in any kind of government project there and all. So, uh, these cases of misuses are checked here and uh, it is according to Article 102. So joint committee on offices of profit is also there for empowerment of women 30 members are there 20 from Lok Sabha 10 from Rajya Sabha so those details are important next joint committee on salaries and allowances they always want to raise their salaries and allowances in 2010 they made it uh, two three times uh, of their 
existing salaries and allowances and there is no confusion among all the parties and they all are in favor of raising these salaries and also there is a committee for that and it also frames rules in respect of amenities like medical housing telephone postal constituency and secretarial facility and they are very much interested uh, in those things we all know about that other important committees are, are there house committee ethics committee library committee and consultative committee but first three are the most important ones and the next ones are less important but they are important next issue you have to recognize which are the sentences correct about vikram sarabhai we are celebrating the uh, centenary year for uh, uh, his birth and he was born in 1919 so this year this year is 100th year of his birth so based on his persuasion the government of india agreed to set up a indian national committee for space research yes it was correct and he was made the chairman of it so in, in 1962 they uh, established this incospar which became isro later in 1947 he founded the physical research laboratory in ahmedabad that is also correct so both the statements are correct here third one is also correct because he was one of the founding members of iim ahmedabad so vikram sarabhai was a great personality he was also a crucial uh, person in establishing the first launch pad in thumba so that was also very very important these details are given here and a satellite instructional television experiment it was established in 1975 so because of his constant contact with nasa the cable television came to india okay and uh, india's first rocket launch site in thumba a small village near tiruvananthapuram there there he also set up india's first facility and prl in ahmedabad and this incospar which was renamed as isro in 1969 he was the crucial person behind all these things regarding the arya but the first satellite of india in 75 he was the uh, working person behind that and i am ahmedabad also and he was given padma bhushan and vibhushan in 72 year and 66 so that's the important detail regarding uh, vikram sarabhai the great vikram sarabhai article 161 what it talks about is it about writs no article 72 and 226 they talk about writ writs are issued by supreme court under article 72 and by high court under 226 so this is wrong elections of mlcs member of legislative councils we were discussing this issue two days back but it is not related to that wrong third it is also wrong that's a separate article for that answer is d governor's power and which powers these are powers of uh, pardoning commuting uh, respite remission for all these issues the clemency powers so they are always compared with the president's clemency powers governor cannot pardon the death sentence okay pardon means totally uh, uh, sending the person at home totally absolving of uh, his all crimes and uh, no commutation no other charges nothing and you send the person home that is called pardoning so only president is allowed to pardon the death sentence but governor can commute the death, death sentence into the lifetime or something like that so that is a difference second difference regarding the military tribunals verdicts president can decide about that governor cannot so military tribunals and the death sentence these two are the important differences between the clemency powers of governor and president there so article 161 talks about governor's power of clemency so d is the right answer here and it is all given here next pollutants which are not covered under naki national air quality index you see cpcb and the ministry they were running the national ambient air quality program and uh, that was a monitoring program that's still going on naki was established according to nax uh, uh, standards national ambient air quality standards so naki air quality index has eight pollutants pm10 ppm2.5 both particulate matters are there so this is correct lead pb is also there ns3 ammonia is also there but co2 is not there co2 is not a pollutant you see co2 is a essential uh, uh, constituent of the atmosphere but only the concentration of it that is the problem which is rising and polycyclic hydrocarbons pchs they are also not covered under the list eight pollutants are there and there are respective limits for all of them real time monitoring happens under naki and uh, the important monitoring station is there in eastern delhi there 
so the data is uploaded every time three and five is the right answer here b is the right answer you can see zero to fifty good 300 to 400 very poor 400 to 500 severe category and the consequences the health health impacts are also given here next mount kilimanjaro recently a differently abled person from arnakulam kerala he scaled mount kilimanjaro there so is it the highest peak in south america no south america's highest peak is akonga gua in indies this mount kilimanjaro is the highest peak of africa which is there in where in which country you tell me it's a dormant volcano yes it is a dormant volcano there okay so i will show you the location there and very interesting th thing about that only two is the right answer first is wrong you can see kilimanjaro mount kilimanjaro it's a dormant volcano and the height is 4900 meters from its base there are two types of heights for these mount mountains like from the base and from the sea level from the sea level the height is 5895 meters so normally on the atlas this height is given but sometimes the height from the base is also asked so mount everest mount everest peaks height is 8850 meters we all know about that but that height is from sea level from the base it is less than that and this dormant volcano is there in tanzania okay so that's also very very important and uh, these are the people who scaled it for the first time in 1889 so very important one it is located just south of equator you can see this is tanzania this is kenya here and on the border near the border uh, under the tanzanian territory this mount kilimanjaro is located here and the equator runs through these countries the uganda kenya and all so that's really really interesting a phenomena near equator but the peak is always covered with snow why because the height you can see the real picture and the peak is covered with snow and the picture tells you it's a volcano it's a dormant volcano so that's important next issue nearly 2000 liver transplants they are carried out in our country annually and is it highest in the world yes it is highest in the world and india is a country where liver disease are a silent killer and they are too much in number but these are normally not reported like other diseases so that's really a important issue and india's first voluntary liver transplant registry was started on 15th of august that's correct but not by ministry it is by the river transplant society of india so that's the issue and uh, it is not only the problem of alcohol it is also a problem of lifestyle and less exercise and some other uh, issues so non alcoholic fatty liver disease is the major killer there for these uh, liver diseases so liver failure cases are too many in, in our country and uh, liver transplant cases 2000 in number they happen every year but we do not have a register for that so this is going to be a national registry on a voluntary basis people will be reporting here all the hospitals all the states are requested for that and the answer would be only one because it is not the ministry of health who launched it you can see this issue appeared in uh, today's newspaper liver is the biggest organ in our body and it is located just below the right lung and left to your stomach so that's the issue next C located near Ireland I was explaining you the geography of uh, UK and Ireland in the morning uh, uh, lesson today so they may ask you geographical details of this area near Ireland which sea will be the nearest Ross Sea it is wrong it is there uh, near Antarctica English Channel North Sea Celtic Sea they all are located in the area but which one is the nearest so D is the right answer here because you see this is UK four countries are there in UK Scotland Northern Ireland England and Wales Irish Sea this is Celtic Sea just south to Ireland uh, Peninsula there English Channel separates France and UK North Sea separates Denmark and UK so the nearest one will be Celtic Sea so this is all for today we will meet again tomorrow thanks a lot keep watching it was a mid -sign.